doing great and so happy to have you here with me tonight. Um, it is always like a love fest when I meet other women who um, have experienced fibroids and who have had a bout with fibroids. But before we talk about uh, that and our love fest that we had at sure. Channel 9, I want to just tell them who you are. I think it's so important for women to know your story. Um, and I don't mind reading your bio if you don't mind me reading it because I think that it deserves to be read. And I don't want to leave out one detail about you, Delia, because you are a journalist by profession whose passion is to tell compelling stories. Wow, like what a great introduction to who you are. Um, and your first breakthrough was in Washington at the U.S. Senate mm -hmm. Radio TV um, Gallery and at NBC Network. Um, so I think you have definitely paved the way and been in some great, spaces to be able to tell your story and tell compelling stories. But not only that, um, currently you are an anchor at WUSA TV and you are a fibroid survivor. So while you were telling these stories and writing these really great um, stories on Capitol Hill and for the news, you were battling with fibroids and looking great while doing it. I want you to tell us a little bit about um, your bout with fibroids and tell us uh, when you Well, thanks it. for having me. I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, so I have been in the business for about 23 years, believe it or not. Uh, I've been here at Channel 9, uh, and we met in the green room by chance, and it was like divine intervention yes. that, we, um, that we met that day because it's led to, to this and an opportunity to open the room and open the floor for discussion and be honest about um, about our lives, our challenges and how we push through uh, and, and how we've gotten support from each other. So, you know, my fibroids um, really came about, I had a small one after my third child. So I have three daughters. I have three daughters. Okay. They're 12, uh, 10, no, 13. She's gonna be mad. She She's 13, she's an official teenager, 10 and eight. So after my third child, I had a, fi a small fibroid, doctor dismissed it and she said, it'll probably shrink once you deliver, they normally do that. Never really thought about it afterwards. Really? Never thought about it for a while. Um, and then really my fibroid grew during the pandemic. And I really feel like our body stress manifests itself in our body in different ways. And I'm a true believer that even though I was predisposed and already had a fibroid, during the pandemic, it grew rapidly. So I was kind of seeing these signs. I had a heavy flow, but like so many of us, we just push through, keep working, ignore the obvious telltale signs that our body is is, is warning us something isn't right. And remember, this was the height of the pandemic. No one was really going to their doctor. Uh, and I had a pretty rigorous work schedule, if you can imagine. Remember DC and the George Floyd oh, protests yeah. and all the demonstrations. I was on the go. And uh, it wasn't until the signs were very clear that something was not right that I went to the doctor. And I literally just went to the doctor just to ch check it off the list, right? I'm going to go get my annual exam and move on. I'm going to go to spring break and we'll just check that off the list. She later called me and during my spring break, we had, we had a, uh, let's backtrack because I went to the, the appointment she immediately recognized something was wrong. So we had an ultrasound. And my doctor is great because she's not an alarmist at all, right? So she didn't, she didn't freak out. She just said, let's just take a look at what, what's happening here. They, um, in, in April, I was diagnosed with a 15 centimeter rapidly growing fibroid that was deteriorating. And which means it had outgrown its blood supply. So it was getting soft. So it was growing, but it had outgrown 
it's blood supply. So a grown, I, it's so crazy. I, I don't think I've yeah. ever heard of a rapidly growing, deteriorating. It seems a little oxymoronic. I don't know if you're able to explain that a little bit. If you are, I, I don't know if you're able to, because I don't understand that. That's crazy. I, I wouldn't know what to say to a doctor if they said it's rapidly growing. Right. But it's so they said it's rapidly the growing time. because they believe I got it. Because the last time we checked my fibroid, it was three centimeters. Right. And, and then, then it was the size, the size of, a of a grapefruit. grapefruit. So they're like, rapidly growing. it grew rapidly. Yeah. Um, so that was like a cause for concern. Because they're like, wow, this really grew over time from your last appointment. It wasn't even an issue. Um, and then it had outgrown, because it got so large, it outgrew its supply. Uh, it's blood supply. So it was actually, uh. it was soft. So the way the doctor described it, if they went in and I ended up getting a hysterectomy by go, if, if they were to go in and just do a myomectomy, then they could risk puncturing it. And I, I could have bled out because it, it was so soft. Wow. So your doctor, yeah. so, yeah. so can I interject for a moment? Because a lot women that are watching Delia don't have never been given options right and it sounds to me that you were presented with one or two which could have been the myomectomy or in your case you got the hysterectomy can you believe that most of the women watching mm -hmm. us have never been given an option and that yeah that's why we do this chat because we want women to know that you do have options I am applauding your doctor for giving you some options because unfortunately most women either don't know their options or they have no clue, you know, because the doctor has not even said anything. And these are the professionals we're relying on to give us that kind of, that kind of information. Now, did you, cause I know you're a researcher and I know that you, you do your homework. You're such a great journalist and you tell stories, but, did you do the research yourself on fibroids and options to get rid of them or were you no, relying I didn't. on your doctor? research? I talked to other, other uh -huh. trusted uh -huh. friends of mine. Now here's the thing. And this is why this is so important because when you're diagnosed with a fibroid, even, even someone like me who is a natural researcher and interviewer, and I ask questions constantly. So I feel like I'm always, advocating for myself but when you're diagnosed with something like a fibroid you there are you feel alone there are so many questions there's so much uncertainty around it um and fear right and so so and and sometimes i think our medical professionals aren't always the best at educating our educating their patients about their options because they don't know a lot about fibroids. That's what I've learned throughout this process that there are some doctors who, who are very well versed, others who aren't. There are, you know, then again, we know as black women, some doctors don't take our pain um, and our concerns as seriously um, as they would a white woman. And so there are so, so much, there's so much systemic um, challenge challenge that we have to work through um, to advocate for ourselves and to to learn more about fibroids but um, I will tell you not only did I do some research and you know hit up Google I talked to a very close nurse friend of mine in the family who had a fibroid and who counsels other women on fibroids but I also came to Instagram and I found not only um, not only your organization, but I found the White Dress Project, and I found yes. resources. I found a community. So here I was faced with this diagnosis and this option, like you can get a myomectomy, but it's really not recommended because this is your condition. And if we go in and do that, you might bleed out. Um, other folks saying, listen, you had your three kids you know, you've been blessed, just get a hysterectomy. It's probably the way to go. If you can keep your ovaries, then fine. But you still feel so isolated. You have all these options swirling around your head because whatever you're doing is gonna be final. It's surgery, right? Um, thank God for Instagram, right? Thank God.
for all these fibroid warriors who are out there like yourselves and so many women who are who are watching right now because I got so much knowledge and support literally from these Instagram pages. Absolutely. And I think having a tribe of people around you that have like minds and like issues is very helpful. And, you know, it's it's funny because our, our mutual colleague, Leslie, you know, knew what I was going through with the fibroids. Um, she and I have been um, colleagues and friends and we're sororers. And, mm -hmm. you know, just having that sister friend, you know, who cared, you know, and knew what I was dealing with and then took it a step further by introducing me mm. to you. And she had talked about you to me before. And we, I, every time I would come to the station, I would just never had an opportunity to meet you. But it's people like her who take the extra mile and say, hey, you know, Delia, she dealt with the same thing. And she had the same surgery as you. And you guys should talk. Like you guys should, you guys should talk because I, I, you know, I was telling Leslie, you know, hey, oh. you know, I've had so much weight gain, you know, I've had, you know, I've had a fluctuation in, mm -hmm. you know, my, my hormones, like I'm hot, I'm cold, I'm, I'm mad, <laughs> I'm sad, I'm, I'm up, I'm down, you know, and it, it's crazy because when you remove the, the uterus, and I say this all the time, it yeah. is a place where our hormones are housed. It is, it is, it is where, mm -hmm. it is where our femininity begins, you know, and it's very difficult um, to, to have the same feelings and emotions that you had before. So for some of my friends, you know, they said their sex life went crazy, like it went through the roof, like now they're ready to rock and roll and they lost weight, mm -hmm. but that unfortunately wasn't my story. Um, can you tell, share with us um, a little bit about how you've been feeling since you did choose hysterectomy, um, how that has affected you um, since I've been able to share, because I wouldn't have otherwise been able to share that with you yeah. had I not known that about you. So tell us how your experience with having a hysterectomy um, has been and how I long has I first want to say that having a sister to talk to is so valuable because I never, um, he, that's the thing about then the power about having these conversations because it takes down like the, the, the barrier and it opens it up and it takes, takes away the fear and the shame of it. Right. Because when I started, when I was going through my journey and I recognized my platform as a reporter and as an anchor to, to share my story and elevate the story of others of women, I found so many women in my circle we're literally like, girl, yes, I know. Same thing with me. And it's like, we don't have these conversations enough to advocate for each other, to support each other, give each other advice. This is what I did. This, these are the questions I asked. So um, to answer your question, I, was I had my hysterectomy in June of 2021. I was diagnosed in April, had the surgery in June. So it was intense. I had a lot, I had to like take down all this information and be okay. Yeah, and be proactive. Proactive? And be like, yeah, you had yeah, to be like, and be, be like I gotta um, move. not only proactive, but, but like center myself and be prepared for what is a life-changing journey, right? Um, so it took some time. I, I have my, I kept my ovaries intact but it takes a little time for your body to kind of figure out what's happening. So ovulation took, I, it took several months until I started to ovulate again. Um, you know, it took, I, funny story, when I went back to the doctor and she gave me clearance to have sex again, she said, all right, now listen, I, I want you to have some C, C plus sex. She's like, don't go all hard. Wait a minute, we gotta stop right there because that's that's so good to me. That has just wrecked me for the night, okay? It is taking me completely out of here and I am like, passed out. Plus. I love that. First of all, can we talk first of all? High achieving right. women don't do C plus nothing. <laughs> we okay, we high achieving women, dr goal driven women, and oh everybody that's watching this live, I'm sure. C plus, like we we listen, we pride mm. ourselves in A plus sex, okay? So I, like, I okay. know that for but you I, was like, I, what? I, I realized what she meant. So did she mean like you had the whole back 
a little bit or did she mean that what well, like what was she saying that like what did she say that don't to me or like throttle. don't go full throttle yeah like i'm gonna have to get a, and and and, and really? i immediately knew what that because it feels different you know and you're still so you're you know you, it you still it's like having for those who may have ch children out there it's like it's like having sex after your child right like you're you know you're still like like okay feeling things out we can't go too crazy right it's a little you're a little freaked out and it's like right. i don't really know if you should right. be doing this but, to me right <laughs> I, I i know right. i want to do it right. but i don't know if you should right. be doing it it takes time <laughs> it takes like emotionally and physically like you need to kind of build all it of that back up does. so you know god bless my husband because it takes a very understanding partner to work with you um and so listen, uh -huh. listen delia put a pin yeah. right there about partners yes pause can we pause about partners can we just do a pause <laughs> because i know you're on a roll but you're you're so good and you're talking so good i do you know that during the month of February, the month of love, I summons five mm -hmm. men to get on my lives to talk about their experience mm -hmm. with their mates having fibroids. And do you know the only one uh, that showed up to talk live was my husband? My brother wouldn't do it. I'm putting them out there. My brother wouldn't do it. Three of my very good colleagues and friends who, you know, working on yeah. set, they become like your set husbands and not in a funny way, you guys. You guys have to know <laughs> set vernacular, okay? Men that work with us on TV sets yeah. because we spend hours with them. Usually you find one or two that you pal around with and not in a in a in a sexual mm -hmm. way, but like those are your buds, right? You you eat with them, you you know, y'all talk trash, and inevitably you talk about relationships. Yeah. These, these are my guys. They said, Oh yeah, I'll get on and talk on your live and when it came time to do the live i'm asking them to send in the picture because we are doing a live on thursday and all of them backed out and i don't know what that was about how open is your husband or how how understanding was your husband to dealing with the fireworks because they wouldn't i never got a chance to talk to them like how they felt but when i initially talked to them they were like oh yeah i'll get on and talk about my experience but I don't know if they were embarrassed or if they were feeling like, whoa, this is a lot because it's not That's very normal. Sure, but I think it's a, lot, a lot of men don't How does really know, about right? That? So I think they feel, they don't feel like they're knowledgeable enough. I mean, I had to school a lot of folks about, about, um, about fibroids and men. And even my brother, like after getting the hysterectomy, he was asking all these questions about hormones. I'm like, but I, I kept, I kept my ovaries. So here's how the female anatomy works, David, right? So like, there are some, some men who, who mean well, they just, they don't understand the impact and what it means. I will give my husband a shout out because when I told you that I found all these resources online and on social media, that was him. That was my husband who directed me to the white dress project. He said, hey, my home girl on Facebook just posted about her experience with fibroids and she referenced this group. You might want to check them out. I know. Wow. I know. Bravo to your hubby. Tell him he's, tell your hubby he's my brother. I okay. Oh my God. That's so good to know that he took the time to help to, to reach out or to at least share with you resources. Because there are so many, and sometimes, you know, just hearing it from our husbands, it sounds, it comes across a little differently. It's like, okay, if he took the time to even read through that post and share that, maybe I should take the time to take heed to that yeah. post. So you took the heed to that post and you found out about the White Dress Project, and which it changed is an amazing everything. organization. It changed you know, because he knew yeah. that he wasn't the one to give me the comfort and the advice and the resources I need. He knew, it, he knew oh. he, wasn't, he wasn't equipped to do it, um, but he could see that I was struggling with it. Um, you know, I gotta say after those doctor's appointments in the very beginning, I mean, there was a lot of sitting by the water with some, a cone of chocolate ice cream, you know, <laughs> like just 
like, okay, Tell me about like, it. this is my life, right? And so I think you do go through a moment of, of depression or of, of like, you know, why is this happening and not feeling adequate or feeling whole and powerful and um, all of those things, all of those yeah. stereotypes. But, you know, I think the more that I've talked about it and have shared my story, I, I thought that was my weakness, but it's become my strength. Right? Wow. Like, wow. What we think Amazing. is our weakness yeah. and tearing us down and and causing problems in our life is that's really our strength. That if we tap into that, that is really where we shine and where we can yeah. we can make an impact on other women, right? Having conversations like this. You know, we never know who's gonna be tuning into this months from now, not even on this live, but like months from now it yeah. exists and people are gonna be, you know, where we were facing surgery and look and scrolling through Instagram trying to figure out who's talking about this, who's been through this. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why we we really encourage those that watch us to hashtag it, to share it, because you know, those people that you influence in your circle, you know, is, is very important. And people don't realize they're a beacon of hope and light to those that follow them. And so we have a, a slogan that we say here at the USA Five Boy Centers, which is check your circle, know your status. So many people don't check their circle, circle and they don't even know the status of those in their circle, right? Meaning knowing if your friend has or does not have a fibroid. And so that accountability is very important. And I think that it's important, especially if you're a woman at all, that you would share this because there are inevitably, there are women in your circle that are going to have a fibroid. I don't oh. think people understand the statistics of this, that over 80% of African-American women mm -hmm. will end up with a fibroid. And so, and that's also, the numbers are high for Latinos. The numbers are high for, you know, women from other ethnicities um, because, and we have not been able to, to, to I guess, we, we haven't been able to find yeah. a common denominator with it. You know, once some people say it's from what we eat, stress, our ethnicity, you know, it, hair products. We've heard so many stories, which is why it's so important that we do the research. And so we have been fighting, fighting, Delia, um, to mm -hmm. get research done on Capitol Hill. You know, we have several Congresswomen who are helping to uh, uh, support our efforts you know, in our Fibre Foundation, um, which is our nonprofit side of USA Fibre Centers. And we've really been just fighting and fighting and fighting and spreading the word. And yeah. it all starts right here, just from us raising our voices and saying, hey, look, we got to find solutions. We have to make sure that people understand what this epidemic is, what's happening with our women, you know. And so, I am so grateful to your husband. I'm so grateful to you. I know that you chose um, hysterectomy. Um, and there are a lot of women who don't know their choices. Prior to you, you choosing hysterectomy, you said you did your research. Um, did you know about UFE, mm -hmm. which is what we actually, the procedure we do here at USA Fibroid Centers? Had you heard um, about UFE? I, I did hear about it. Um, it wasn't... It wasn't proposed to me as an option because of of the the nature of my fibroid. But I, since since I did a story, um, so I came back to work after two months off and ended up doing a story about fibroids. Right, I, I knew I had this platform, and I was like, it's not just me. Like we're gonna talk about this, right? I interviewed some other women who are high profile, including you know DJ Heat, who's a you know a popular DJ in DC. Yes. She's been, she's been yes. our, our uh, talk about you I twice. love her too. We I love, love DJ, DJ Heath. Heath. So she was so open and honest. And um, I've, you know, we've stayed connected just, you know, even personally after the story, because um, you do connect, you do, you do build this bond, right? And this love for women who have kind of gone through the same thing that you have gone through, the support to, and because you want to let folks know that they're not alone. Um, but, uh, yeah. you know, once I realized, okay, I need to have this platform, I need to like, you know, tell this story, 
it empowered me, empowered other people to do the same. That's when I started to learn more about options, about different procedures. But honestly, I, I didn't know a whole lot coming in. I've gotten so much more education um, since. And it's been so empowering because now people are, believe it or not, coming to me for resources, right? Like, yeah. Well, I have a great stat that I want to share yes. with you since they come to you because you're the plug and people need to know that you know your stats. So I don't know if you knew this, but UFE has a 95% wow. success rate um, relieving you from all the symptoms and it has a shorter recovery period wow. than any of the surgeries that we mentioned. So UFE is really, um, it's, it's, it is like monumental. It's a monumental procedure. And I want to share that with those that are watching and those that will watch later um, about that success of the, of the surgery. It is a process or procedure where they um, embolize or they, they suffocate. If, let me just use layman's term. They suffocate the vein because as you said mm -hmm. about your fibroid that was growing, um, it relies on a blood. Uh, uh, on, Continue, on, yeah, it, it gets off, fed. Off of blood. It gets fed, right? And so they, they actually, they suffocate the, the vein or they, they cut it off and now it doesn't have a supply, which is what your, mm -hmm. when your fibroid outgrew itself and it was shrinking, that's what ultimately happens, happens with the embolization is that the fibroid then begins mm -hmm. to shrink and then you pass it. And this process is in the office. You're in an office for about two hours. They're preparing you. Um, you go home that night. So it's an in and out procedure. It's non-invasive. And you're back to work in eight now, days. You're back to work in eight days. And so many women don't know about this procedure um, and don't have a clue that it's even offered. And like you and I, we were offered, you know, hysterectomy. I too had children. And my doctor was like, you know, you're a woman of a certain age. You've yeah. had your kids. You're blessed. Let's get rid of this. Let's be done with it. Let's wash our hands of it. And we'll keep your ovaries but and you'll be fine. It's not a party and, afterwards. Um, it's not you know, that simple, I had known right? About, yeah. No, it's not that simple. The emotional part of having that surgery yeah. is something that I did not bank on. Like you said, it's just feeling inadequate and not feeling that you are enough um, for, you know, your mate. But also, well, I also felt bad, Delia, because like you, I am a researcher and mm. I did not research that. So while I was researching everything else, events, shoes, clothes, weaves, braids, I was not researching about options yeah. because I trusted my doctor. And if I could leave any advice to those that are watching us tonight, my bit of advice would be one, find your community and two, know your options because I may have chosen a different option, Delia. I don't know. I, I love the fact that your doctor left you with options. I just, that is the one, my one regret, because I feel like I made a choice that maybe I would have made differently had I known more. And mm. I can't blame anybody but myself for yeah. that. Yeah. Right? So with that being said, what advice would you leave for those that are watching tonight? Um, I think from your we also have to give words. ourselves, and I'm going to tell you this, Kim, because I love you. Give us, give ourselves a little grace, right? We have to forgive ourselves and give ourselves that grace. That you know what? Sometimes we want to be the best advocate for ourselves, but sometimes it's hard to do that. And and in order to to be that advocate, we have to understand that you know mistakes mistakes happen and. And there are there are peaks and valleys. Um, so I don't want you to regret anything that you've done. Now, I think everything has a consequence, right? And so we need to, as women who have had hysterectomies of a certain age, um, even we with these um, ovaries intact, I mean, it's still a shift, a hormonal shift. So I'm going through that right now um, and asking my husband for grace. I'm like, I don't know why I'm acting this way. You've just got to give me a little grace. Because I, you know, I'm working through it. My husband just popped in. I hope he, I look, I hope he hears you and I hope you give me some credit. But what I would say is, 
Bro, I, I mean, I, I love your advice. You know, find find a community, find sisters who will support and love you. Um, give yourself grace um, and, you know, love yourself. Give yourself time to mourn if you need to mourn, right? Um, to celebrate those those milestones when you, when you do feel good. But be empowered to ask the questions. Just because that doctor has a white lab coat doesn't mean they know your body better than you. So if you feel like something isn't right, then you, you have to ask your doctor questions. And if you don't feel like you can, um, I know sometimes, you know, if you're in front of a doctor, things are swirling and you kind of forget, bring a notebook, write questions down, Wow. go make sure they answer all of your questions. I'm an, I'm, I don't want to say I'm, a, I'm an annoying patient, but I am one of those patients who will not la let you leave the door uh, without getting my, my questions answered. So, you know, know that wow. there is a, there are people, there are organizations here to support you. There are resources, there are options, but always advocate for yourself. Um, give yourself love and ask those questions because you ultimately know your body and a doctor can't tell you, can't, can't mandate something, right? Can't he, a doctor can't mandate something for you that is not meant for you. So, you know, just trust yourself and, and, you know, and ask the questions. Wow. You have been so incredible and so inspiring to me. I, I, I swear, I, I, I'm just, I'm hanging on to your every word, your confidence and your resilience has really paid off. And I do believe that, you know, that part of your life was yeah. um, meant to happen um, because you were here to help somebody else. I always feel like, you know, our life circumstances happen so that we can help somebody behind us. Um, to, to journey we journey better and journey well. So thank you so much for sharing your heart, sharing your <laughs> life, making us laugh, making me cry. <laughs> I feel tears coming from my eyes because I know I know how sincere you are about helping people and telling your story. So thank you so much. We appreciate you here at the USA Fibroid Centers. And for those of you that are watching, um, make sure you call our 1-800 number. Actually, it's an 833 number. So one is 833-609-1100. And I have it listed here on the screen. It's 833-609-1100 for your free consultation. We have over Amazing. 40 centers around the country that are here to help you to find solutions. Um, one of the things I love about Fibroid Centers, and I... I I actually had a hysterectomy, but I have watched and walked through many women through their procedure is that they will let you know mm -hmm. what you're eligible for. They'll let you know what insurance they accept. And if they don't, what options you have with your insurance and what you should do. So they go the extra mile. So I definitely want to encourage those of you that are watching, if you come in, you know, and you're looking at this later on to just know that you're in a safe place. And you're in a place where people care. Um, our founders, Dr. Jan Katznelson and Flora Katznelson, were doctors doing something altogether different before they even came to this point to do wow. UFEs. They were heart surgeons. Dr. Jan was a heart surgeon. And he realized, it's so funny, and I'll just tell this quick story before we jump off, um, Delia, that they, they, he was a heart surgeon and he realized that many of the women that he was treating for heart disease ended up when you would look through the chart of their ailments oh my that they gosh. all had fibroids and so he was trying to figure out mm. was this a result of the fibroid and many of the case yes because <clears throat> the heart because of the weight gain you know, because of everything that they had gone through like you said the trauma the 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 everything that you deal with with fibroids mm. they ended up with heart disease um and so he said, I got to go back to the beginning. I don't want to catch yeah. them at the end of their rope when it's almost too late. I want to catch them early on so they don't end up at a heart surgery. Yeah. And so that's why I applaud them because to switch, you know, 
uh, your practice, your area of practice all together and goes in a different direction because you want to help people speaks volumes to me about the integrity of this, of this organization. And so I definitely want to stress and encourage those that are watching to make the call, check your circle, know your status. It only takes a few moments just to go in and get your MRI, submit your information information and find out if I got fibroid, what are my options? And like Delia did, <laughs> let's make a move. Let's make some choices about our lives and not, because yeah. the same. We can't it keep putting worse, it yeah. off and it will get worse. And it gets worse. It gets worse. And so I thank you. You don't even understand how many points oh, you made goodness. within this interview. Well, this okay. Was this was yeah, wonderful. You are and, right I, and, you know, and I think we can't be afraid of of just jumping right in, right? The fear sometimes will paralyze you, right? But your body will tell you when something is not right, when something is off. We can't be afraid because there are so, like you said, so many options, so many resources, so many people doing good work um, that uh, there, really, there really is no excuse to feel isolated when there's this amazing community of support and, and resources. So I thank you so much for doing this, Kim. I'm so glad that we connected and we can chat. I feel like we can probably have a part two. I don't know. I feel like there's a part. Absolutely. No, I, look, I already know that, that my director is going to call me tomorrow and say, oh my God, Kim, that was such an incredible interview. Get her back. So yes, we are leaving that door open. You are welcome to come back to talk about you anytime you want to talk about anything that's dealing, that's dealing with this area of, of our body, our reproductive health. We want to talk. I actually want to talk to you later about your bout with five okay. while you were pregnant. So that'll be a part two. Uh, we'll, we'll get into that because a lot of women are concerned about uh, pregnancy and fibroids, but we won't give, we won't let the cat out the bag. Good we'll please. let you guys know when she'll be back. Thank you so much. You are I awesome. Know. Please tell your family hello. Thank you for sharing us, sharing you with Thank us. Thank you we so appreciate much. You and and I'm happy to be here. I love you. I support you all. Thank you so much. I love you too. I will. I love you too. Have a wonderful Bye, evening. Soon. Good night. Thanks.